If you think the only use for an eraser is to get rid of mistakes, then you're totally wrong. We're going to explore different types of erasers and ways you can use them in your colouring to create some really interesting effects. These techniques will absolutely take your colouring to the next level and really make it stand out. Stay tuned to find all the best tips and tricks with erasers to create some really cool effects. I'm Jenny. And I'm Honey. And we're part of the team who make up Colouring Heaven. Okay, let's first look at just the bog standard eraser or rubbers as we used to call them. And they do in some countries, I know. Um, this is a Derwent one, you can get all sorts of brands, really cheap and cheerful ones or, or artist ones like this, but this is just a normal rubber. Um, that also comes in a pencil form like this. Um, really, really tiny point, you just pop the end for the rubber to come out and that's made of the same stuff. So let's just give that a try as our first one, just do a sample. I'll do a bit of a gradient so we can see how effective it is for different um, hardnesses of pressure and amount of pigment that you've laid down. Okay, so this is just the normal eraser. I'm rubbing that quite hard. And you can see, use my brush there to get all the crumbs off. Um, how much would you say that was rubbing out? Do you want to go on your one? Yeah. Not massively. Not massively, massively <laughs> no. I mean, let's have a go. Especially if you've used quite heavy pressure or built up the layers, it's not going to remove things completely. Yeah, not fantastic, is it? And he's just using yeah. a different colour there, so you can see. So I did half and half. I definitely knocked it back. Yeah, and if it's just a little mistake that you've made, it'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, or if you just wanted to lighten the colour, if you accidentally went a bit heavy-handed, I guess it would do the job for that, but definitely not going to fully get rid of anything with this one. So just doing another sample there to use the... This is actually a Tombow pencil eraser. So again, you've got about the same amount of removal, I think, being that it's the same thing. It's just you've got more precision with, with a tool like this. Yeah, I guess if you had gone over the edge of a line or something and yeah, you just wanted to neaten it up or a tiny detail, you're going to find you can this also one a bit get, more useful. You can also get the same thing um, in an electric eraser. This is a Derwent one. And you can get this with two different ends. This is the wider of the two, but you can get it finer, which is more like the pencil one there. Mm. Um, like I say, battery, or you can get them USB as well. So it's just press the button. If I do that next to the manual one, you can see it does actually remove a bit more. I love using this. This is my personal <laughs> one. Do you want to go on that one? Yeah. I know these are fun. I'd never used one until a few weeks ago. It's great, isn't it? Oh, so much easier. Yeah. Doing all the hard work for you. Yeah. Something else that's quite handy to have is a little brush with um, when you're colouring, especially if you're using the eraser. As you can see, there's lots of little bits that come off, so just giving mm. it a brush so that you're not rubbing over your pigment. Yeah, getting oils colouring. on yeah. from your fingers. So a little brush like this is handy. Yeah, I think that's done slightly better. Yeah. Only marginally. I wouldn't say it was massively more effective. So let's do another one. Hard pressure going out. It's a little bit more gentle. And we'll look at uh, what should we do next. So this is a plastic eraser. It's a Staedtler one. This is the kind of thing that I used to use at school, actually. And this is um, harder than a traditional rubber eraser that we've just looked at. Um, Try putting down a bit more pressure with my pencil at the end this time and see how it fares. Yeah. And you'll see here, it doesn't really... My brush, I'm not taking my own advice there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, again, not hugely, and the, the harder you, because it's quite hard, 
if you rub hard, I feel like it might disturb the fibres in the paper. And... Mm -hmm. mm. Not as great. I don't know, I feel like it... Mm. It feels more difficult to yeah. get it up. It's taken up the lighter pressure more has, effectively. Yeah. That's all but gone. I, maybe I didn't give it as much of a rub as you, because mine is still showing. Yeah. I think different colours tend to... Yeah, let me well. show you that one. Over here. So that's the red. I just got rid of it. But more, or maybe you didn't press quite as hard as I did. So yeah, again, I don't think any razor is going to take it off completely. No, colour's a bit more difficult to lift entirely, isn't it? It is. Um, so let's do another little test swatch. So another type of eraser that is used is a um, kneadable eraser. So this is made of quite a squidgy material. It's like blue tack. <laughs> um, and it's really good, not so much for rubbing out the stakes, but for lifting the pigment off if you want to get a bit of a lighter effect, but maybe you've gone in a bit heavy. So I'll show you here. And because it's kneadable, you can get it to a point and do just a tiny little, a tiny little bit to lift off some pigment, or you can go whole hog and lift off bits. You can see it comes on there and you just smoosh it in with the rest to get a clean pit. So you can lift, lift it back for your highlights maybe. But again, it doesn't get rid of everything. So we go. But the benefit with that is that you're not rubbing on the paper. Yeah. Um, you're literally just lifting the pigment off, which I think it's a bit more gentle. Yeah, it definitely is more gentle. <laughs> also, nicer and easier to do. Yeah. You know, I've got a bit of an arm workout trying to get rid of it. You see, it's lifting the light pressure off quite yeah. well on mine. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, obviously with the harder pressure, uh, where you pressed harder with your pencil, yeah. it's, it's just, just like the same way, way it, doesn't it? Squeeze that back in. So um, the last example we've got. Let's do a oh, quite because I've pressed really hard there. <laughs> You're really tested. <laughs> well, this one is actually an ink eraser. So this is the hardest of the lot, and it comes in this pencil format. This is a Faber Castell Perfection, um, and it's got the white tip. They also do one that's got a double end with pink for pencil erasing, but this is the white one for ink erasing, so it's, it's really hard. And it comes with a handy brush at the end to brush away your little rubbings. Um, and because it's um, a in the pencil format, you can sharpen it to get a really good point. So this one, although it's rubbing the paper quite hard, it definitely gets rid of any, if you've got a, a real mistake that you want to hmm. get rid of, I would suggest that this one was... Or if you really wanted to dot in some highlights, like yeah. in quite a detailed way, yeah. that would be quite good. Just be a bit of a pain if you had a big mistake you yes. wanted to get rid of. Yeah. Do you want to give that one a go? There we go, thank you. Mm, yeah, this one is noticeably harder mm. than all the others. You do have to give it quite a heavy hand to... The rubbings of this one are quite different as well. It's yeah, almost they like are. a little powder. Yeah. Rather than the sort of strings of rubber you get with other types. I like having a little brush at the end. Yeah, it's handy, isn't it? It is. It's not doing a bad job, I wouldn't say. Mm. This has definitely been the most effective of them all. Mm. Just one of the smaller points, so yeah, not one for larger areas. Big mistakes. Like so. Um, so that's for um, trying to get rid of mistakes, which is what a rubber is traditionally used for. But also. Um, you can use your erasers for, like I said, lifting the pigment or creating slightly different effects. 
um, which I discovered when I was doing a picture recently from um, my Ferris and Nature issue, which was, I'll show you the, the design here. So I worked on this design and I'd done the background in the solid blue using the um, just pencil shading and graduation to give a highlight around the moon and the little fireflies but I felt it was the background was just a bit plain and flat so I mm. wanted to add a bit of interest something like this uh, and it's a night sky and I know it's not the galaxy but I just thought it would add a bit of interest um, and because I'd already colored it in I used my electric eraser to create this effect so I rubbed some areas back here and also here and then worked some other colours in so I could get a truer colour over the top of the blue. If you just rub that on top of the blue, it would just give this dirty effect here. But by using the eraser to rub those areas back, I really got some nice true colours coming in. Okay. So it looks really effective on the iPad. So I'll do a demonstration here. So I've got the colouring here where I've just done some flat colour and then you can use your electric eraser to rub in some quite random shapes which you can either leave like that as if it's some kind of cloud or, or something or like I say you can colour in in fill with a different colour which works quite nice if you want a galaxy effect. Mm. And you can use this with quite light pressure or go in a bit harder where you really want to get some lighter areas in. So literally just like that. It did make such a difference to your colouring. I saw mm. that piece of colouring you'd done before you'd put did the you? galaxy sky oh, in right. and then after and it just it, it really, lifts, really it, lifts it. It adds a whole other like layer to the colouring and Another just elevates it. The galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Give it a go. And so here you can then work at work in some colour and get the true actual colour rather than a muddy dark effect that you'd get. If you work that colour over there as well it gives a nice graduation. Looks nice and natural. Good for sunsets and things like mm, that. Yeah, but that would be really good. If you really work it outside of the bit that you've rubbed as well so that it joins in. I like that you can use varying pressure with it as well yeah, exactly. to sort of lift yeah. different amounts from the paper. And then if you also work in some of the things on top as well just, just to make that mm. division feel a bit more natural in other areas. And then because it, I was going for a galaxy effect, I finished that off with dots of Posca pen, mm. doing a few little starry highlights and some dots. So I was, I was pleased with how that one turned out. Yeah, it was really effective. Thank you. Really easy as well, I found. Mm. It's not technically very difficult, but makes a big impact. Yeah, definitely. A big payoff for not masses of difficulty. So obviously this is a galaxy sky kind of effect but you could do similar things with um, work really nicely with water. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get the splash and the, the highlights maybe. Mm. In, yeah, you in could show water. where the water reflect, the, where the light reflects off the water. Yeah. But, but also if you were doing like a waterfall design or if there was any sort of crashing of Bits waves. Of crashing and waves of foam. Yeah, and, and I think things that like would that. add it in really nicely. And again with just some Posca pen highlights, white Posca pen highlights that mm. would work really nicely. It's a bit more of an organic process then rather than having to think about when you're laying the colour down originally. Yeah. Yeah, it's good Which if you've not be a bit overwhelming. totally planned your design out. Yeah. You can still go back in and add that lighter colour over the top. Yeah. It's nice. So there's that. How are you getting on? Yeah, well, it's nice. It's easy. 
yeah, I, I, I'm impressed by how, how easy it is for how good it looks. And you could really get inventive with the colours mm. you lay on top, you know, you could yeah, in yeah. include some purples in there for a galaxy or, you know, you could go totally crazy and do like a yeah. fantasy sky yeah. background with loads of different colours. And some pinks and purples mm. and you can go darker obviously with a more inky blue or a black. Mm. Yeah. And again with the water, um, like you say, it could be reflections, all the foamy bits. Yeah, you could swirl in different colours, um, like in the colouring I showed oh, yes. of the in our, from our, from our yeah, mermaid yeah. special in our top five colouring heaven yes. designs video. Um, one of our colourists had sort of swirled lots of greens and blues together. Really interesting colour could, combinations. Mm -hmm, yeah, I reckon you could use this technique combined with colour combinations mm. like that to get a really interesting effect. Yeah. So it's all ways you can um, enhance your colouring really mm -hmm. without going to the the trouble of mm. working in so many layers. I bet you it's could create cheap, some really, kind of it? nice sort of bokeh, bokeh, however, I, yes. know, I never know how you yeah. say that one, effects with that or yeah. I, I, get, I guess in bubbles as well. Yes, very, some nice effects. yes, that, that's actually where this comes in really nicely. Yeah. Um, when we were doing the, I got the sample there. So imagine this is, in fact, I'll just do another bit of colour. sample sheet here. So I think it was in a background and so we were talking about the bokeh effect. So you kind of just laid down a flat colour. Obviously I'm doing that all <laughs> direction. I wouldn't advise doing that for a background because it looks very <laughs> streaky. I'll just put some line sand in the opposite direction to help combat that. you wanted to get that bokeh effect again if you've not planned your colouring so well mm. which I'm guilty of I'm all the time. also very guilty <laughs> of just cracking on again this is great for just lifting off by the smaller areas like that which is good for bubbles underwater which is what I did on the video the other day the mermaids one we were we were looking at yeah I love. or you can take off a, a bigger area And maybe overlap another one. And then you can work back on top of that with another colour. Let's do a nice contrasting orange. So you could just put a soft, soft colouring of orange over there. And then maybe a yellow. Oh, that's looking really good. I'm gonna try putting some bubbles in on mine too. So you can create that bokeh effect without having planned it in. And then with the bubbles, you can add your, there's my Posca. The only thing I'm noticing with this um, electric one is it can be a little more difficult to do tiny details with it where it's... Yes. You yeah, just have to have a very steady hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's well worth... Well worth it. It's a very... It, it lifts it really easily for such a little yeah. effort. So with the bubbles, once you've taken that away, you can then put... A little bit of a shadow on the back side of the a bubble. And your and your Posca highlight. Oh yeah. That looks lovely. Neat in this one. There we go. Bit of a better circle there. Wanna put yours under here and put it over? Oh yeah. We're getting lots of <laughs> bits <I know>. everywhere. <laughs> there we go. Do you want to do it that way? So that we can see it. Cool. So I'll maybe play it. <laughs> Here we are. Right. Mm. 
and layer some of this over this one and go for a lighter one in the background. It's less of a contrast in my colours but I think you could also lean into that mm. if you were going with sort of a limited colour palette. Yeah. Especially for backgrounds, it's just about adding a bit of texture often, isn't it? Rather yeah, than a bit of interest. That draws your so eye not, yeah. to take your focus away from the actual focal point of mm. your colouring. Yeah. So having a, a limited colour yeah. palette in a similar range works yeah. quite nicely. Mm. Try doing a sort of bigger bubble here on this one. So, adding a shadow. And did you say you just added in a highlight mm. with the Posca pen? Good old Posca. There we go, let's give that a go. How's that looking? Cool. Yeah, not bad. I think for, like you said, for a background, you don't want it to be too defined or no. crisp sort of adds to that depth of field um, look to the mm. colouring where you, your main sort of image is the, mo the sort of biggest focus and then the background is softer and draws your attention to the Just main part. Supplementing it with adding a bit of visual texture. Mm. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Colouring Heaven show. Did you know about any of the eraser techniques? Do you do anything different that we didn't touch on in today's video? Be sure to tell us in the comments. I'd love to hear if you have any other suggestions of techniques we could try. I love the galaxy effect that you can create with the electric eraser. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Be sure to tune in to our channel next Friday, midday UK time for our next video. And in the meantime, why not try out some of the techniques from this week's video? See you soon guys. Bye. Bye.